Hey guys, Brandon Lewis of Embedded Computing Design here, and today we're going to be building a PWM for motor control applications using the Microchip Curiosity Development Board, MPLAB X IDE, and MPLAB Code Configurator. We're going to be able to do this without writing a single line of code, and after we get everything set up, it should take us less than five minutes. So, let's get started. So what we're going to need for this project is a Microchip Curiosity Development Board that comes stock with the PIC 16F1619 8-bit microcontroller. These are available from distributors like DigiKey for about $20 plus shipping and handling. We'll also need a USB 2.0 mini cable. If you're a hoarder, you might have one of these in your desk, or you can get one from Radio Shack for less than 5 bucks. Finally, if you don't already have it, we're going to need to download and install the Microchip MPLAB X Integrated Development Environment, the MPLAB Code Configurator plugin, and the Microchip XC8C compiler. You can download all of these for free from www.microchip.com. So our objective today will be to set up a project in MPLAB X, then use the MPLAB Code Configurator to build and flash a simple Hello World application to the Curiosity Board. This is just to make sure that all of our hardware and software is operating correctly. After that, we'll use a FOSS over 4 clock to set up our PWM and its associated timing functions, then flash that code to make one of Curiosity's onboard LEDs blink in conjunction with the PWM period. Okay, so first things first, we're going to want to power on the Curiosity board, and to do that, all we need to do is plug the USB 2.0 mini cable into our computer, and then connect it to the underside of the Curiosity board, which is the J2 connector. So doing that is going to power on two LEDs on Curiosity. One is LED D2, which just indicates that the board has power to it, and LED D1 in the bottom left corner saying that a 3.3 volt power supply is available. We're not going to be using that today, we're just going to be using a 5 volt power supply. So to enable that, make sure that the shunt jumper on the J12 pins is connected to the right two pins of J12. Now the next step is just to set up a new project and we can do that by simply right clicking in the projects window of MPLABX after we've opened up the IDE from our applications folder. So once it's open click right click and add new project. You can also uh, just click the folder icon here in the top left or use the file drop down. That's going to prompt us uh, with a new project wizard. So under the microchip embedded folder, we're going to select a standalone project and then type in the name of our device, which in this case is the PIC 16F1619 microcontroller. You can also select it from the drop down, but there are a lot of devices listed there, so it's easier just to type it in. Go ahead and click next. And then we're not going to be using a debug header today, so we can just click next. Now to select a tool, uh, we're going to select the Curiosity board under Starter Kits. Um, I've already renamed mine to just Curiosity uh, with just a human friendly name, so put whatever you'd like in there. Uh, Curiosity does just fine, otherwise you're just going to end up with a serial number. Click OK, Next, and now we're going to be prompted to select a compiler. Um, there are a couple different versions of the XCA compiler that you can download. Um, one of them is the free edition, which I've downloaded and is fine for our purposes today. The other is a pro version, and the pro version, there is a 60-day free trial available on microchip.com. Um, basically, all that does is add some optimization features uh, if you're getting close to production, but like I said, we won't need the, any of those for today. So go ahead and select the XCA compiler, click Next, and now we're just going to be naming our project, so we'll say PWM Curiosity. And you can go ahead and finish. So you'll see after a couple seconds that it's created a new project for us here in the projects window. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is make sure that our project is enabled with low voltage programming. So to do that, you're just going to right click your project and go down and select properties. And then this window will appear under starter kit. You're going to cycle over to option categories and program options and once you've done that just click the little checkbox here to make sure that low voltage programming is enabled and hit apply even if it's already uh, checked off just do it anyway and hear me and hit, hit apply okay 
So now we're going to turn on the MP Lab Code Configurator. And what the MP Lab Code Configurator does is basically pull in all the information about various devices from a data sheet and allow you to use a GUI to turn features on and off. Um, it's really simple to use. So all you need to do is go up to Tools, Embedded, and then select MP Lab, the MP Lab Code Configurator plugin uh, that you should have downloaded it by this point. And that's going to bring us to a couple of new uh, windows here in the MP Lab IDE uh, GUI. Um, primarily, the system uh, resources are going to show up. And if you click on the system resources, we now need to go ahead and configure low, vo low voltage programming on the device itself. So um, go down underneath configuration two, config two, and then where low voltage programming is, enable the radio button, low voltage programming enabled. And we're ready to roll. So um, at this point we want to run the Hello World application just to make sure that our hardware and software are all installed correctly and, and working in harmony. So click on the GPIO drop down under the project resources. And just double click GPIO. And you'll now see that it's been added to your project. So once it's been added to your project, uh, pin manager will show up over here on the far right. And you'll see a little bit of information about the GPIO pins that you've configured. So far, here in the middle, we haven't configured any yet, but we're about to. So for the Hello World application, we're just going to open up pin RC5. Uh, we want to light LED D7, and that's connected to uh, the RC5 pin. So once we've closed this little lock here, it'll highlight green. And back in the uh, main code configurator navigation, we want to select it as an output because we want to output the LED and start the pin high. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and click generate code. And MP Lab will, uh, the MP Lab code configurator will tell us that we don't have a main C file associated with our project, which of course we don't because we haven't made one. So we'll go ahead and say, yes, we'd like MCC to generate one for us. And we've generated code. So, um, at this point, we can go ahead and make and build, make and program our device, the Curiosity Board. And within a couple seconds, we will see the LED D7 lit statically. So now that we're confident that our hardware and software are all working as intended, we can go ahead and start programming the PWM. So just as before with the GPIO uh, device resource, we're going to add a PWM, which is down here, and we'll use PWM3. So once you add a PWM, it'll automatically bring a timer in uh, as well, because you need a timer for a PWM application. Um, so you don't have to worry about that in case you forget about your timing. And once we've added the PWM and timer resources to our project, you can just go go in here and click on the PWM to see how everything's configured so far. Everything looks in order. And you'll also notice that the timer and PWM3 have been added in the pin manager on the far right. So before we open up those pins, let's check out the timer. And today we're going to be using the FOSS C4 clock and trying to push the upper limits of what the PWM will allow um, in terms of the PWM period so that we can actually see it lighting up on LED D6. Uh, for the most part, control applications are going to be using periods that are in the microseconds. Um, so this is going to be much longer than what you would typically use. But for our purposes, try and push it up into the hundreds of milliseconds. So to do that, we're going to push the prescaler and postscaler up to the max. And prescaler and postscaler are basically just ratios of the number of pulses of the PWM to the uh, timer to a clock cycle. So um, as you can see, 16 to 1, 128 to 1, 
Um, and we're going to want to do that again to push the timer period up as high as possible. And you can see here that uh, I have it configured for 4.9194 seconds. Um, again, much higher than you would use in most control applications, but for our purposes, uh, that'll do. So everything else here can stay this as, it, as it's at its default setting. So you can see the external reset source is timer two, the control mode, uh, rollover pulse. Um, and then if you want, you can go back over into the PWM and look at the PWM period. So we're dealing with a period of 262 uh, roughly milliseconds. So that should be good enough for us to actually be able to see the PWM, PWM uh, report on the LED D6. At this point, we need to open up the pin that controls the PWM. And over here, if we turn on port RA2, uh, <clears throat> the PWM is now connected to that pin. And at this point, we can go back and generate code. And now that we've generated code for the PWM on uh, port RA2, we should be able to make and build our program. And within a couple seconds, see the PWM reporting on LED D6. So there you have it. So there's a brief tutorial for you on how to use the Microchip Curiosity Board and MPLAB Code Configurator to build a PWM in a very little time without writing any code whatsoever. And as you can probably imagine, this is just the tip of the iceberg as far as the functionality that's available with those combined tools. Um, as far as things that you can build without writing any code and in very little time. One thing that is important to note is that I used MPLAB Code Configurator version 2.25, and right now there is a beta uh, 3.0 version available on the Microchip website. That adds in a little bit more, um, a few more al algorithm libraries and some networking stacks, so you can use it in conjunction uh, with some of the other hardware that's available on Curiosity, as well as a series of click on boards that are available through Microelectronica, and those add hardware capability for you know, application specific builds. Um, if you'd like to find out more about MCC, you can visit microchip.com forward slash MCC. And if you'd like to figure out more about the Curiosity board itself, just visit microchip.com forward slash Curiosity. For Embedded Computing Design, I'm Brandon Lewis, and that's all for now. We'll see you next time.